Every one of us have our own busy schedule. It may be for exams, jobs or just for making a YouTube video. Time doesn't stop for anyone. We always cry to get some more time. Till now, you had seen a lot of videos on how to stop the time. But have you ever thought about reversing it? Before we reverse the time, let's study the time first. In simple words, time is a complex term in science. It's the constant that keeps the world, solar system and even the universe ticking. Our lovely universe is about 13.8 billion years old. Till now, uncountable stars have burned and exhausted. Planets have formed and got swallowed by the numerous supernova. In 17th century, Isaac Newton stated that in this vast universe, one second on Earth is the same length of time as that on Mars, Jupiter or in a deep space. He assumed that time is constant everywhere. But in special theory of relativity, Einstein determined that the time is relative. In other words, the rate at which time passes depends on your frame of reference. Just as observers in two different frames of reference don't always agree on how to describe the motion of bouncing ball. So now, time is not a constant. How cool, isn't it? Once it was a constant and now it's not. So if it's not a constant and we can change its speed, why we can't reverse it? Now, there are two ways we can apply the time reverse theory. First one is for macro level and another one is for the quantum level. Even though time is such a fundamental part of our experience, the basic laws of physics don't seem to care with which direction it goes. For example, the rules that govern the orbits of planets work in the same whether you go forward or backward in time. You can play the motions of solar system in reverse and they look completely normal. They don't violate any laws of physics. But the second law of thermodynamics or disorderness is the main factor which opposes the time reverse theory, which states that entropy or disorderness of a universe is always increasing. If time's arrow follows the increase of entropy and if the entropy in the universe is always increasing, then it means that at some point in the past, entropy must have been low. So why was the universe in a such a low entropy state in the first place? Let's take a system of thousand particles, which representing the stars and galaxies in the universe. In this experiment, it was observed that regardless of starting positions and velocities, at some point, the particles inevitably find themselves clustered together in a ball before dispersing again. This moment of clumping is equivalent to the Big Bang, when the whole universe was squeezed into an infinitesimally small point. Here, the main thing happens. If we consider this experiment on Newtonian time, the events that occur before the particles clump, that is before the Big Bang, orients the second direction of time. If you play the events backward from this point, the particles will appear to disperse from the clump. Because complexity is increasing in this backward direction, this second arrow of time also points into the past, which according to this second time direction is actually the future of another universe that exists on the other side of the Big Bang. Isn't fascinating? Our past is their future. The problem with entropy is that it's defined in terms of energy and temperature which are measured based on some external reference, such as thermometer. In the case of universe, there is nothing outside it, so you need a quantity that doesn't rely on any units of measurement. From here, we need to rely on complexity. That's not to say that entropy is irrelevant. Our day-to-day -day experiences with time, like your ice lemonade, do rely on entropy. But when considering time at cosmic scales, you need to think of universe in terms of complexity rather than entropy. One major limitation to this model is that it's based solely on classic physics, ignoring the quantum mechanics. Nor does it include Einstein's theory of general relativity. There is no dark energy or anything else that needs to be more accurately modeled in the universe. Now let's assume that we finally able to reverse the time at macroscopic level. But here, quantum level properties opposes this model again. Light is electromagnetic wave which always propagates away from the source. If somehow we manage to reverse the time, it will mean that light wave must travel from our brain, eyes, to the source. 
This doesn't make sense. Literally, since we actually can't sense the light, our brain haven't evolved to process such inverse process. There are so many examples like this. So in conclusion, we can't reverse the time since we haven't acquired the required technology. But we can't say about future. Maybe in upcoming decades, it will be ordinary to reverse the time and give a hug to your grandfather.